So here's how I dealt with it. I <laughs> I had to call some persons that I honor and I told them the whole story and I felt like you guys already know me. I have a track record in this place. I'm not that kind of girl. This is what this person is saying. And they were like, ah, we can't trust anybody, yo. <laughs> God. Ah, ah. We don't know anybody. We don't, apart from when we come to this church, we don't know what you are. What you, we can't trust anybody. If the girl is saying, I say if the girl is saying, okay, 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 sorry, sir, sorry, ma. Did this girl see me with her husband at any point in time alone? No. Good. Did this girl see any text message? In fact, did she see my number saved on his phone? No. Okay, ma. Is there a selfie between me and this man? Only me and this guy? No. So this general selfie that everybody took, and because my face is there, she peeked on that and said, I'm sleeping. You know the accusations that... It taught me something because they used to say something that in every room where there is a truth. It's a lie, yo. Somebody can wake up one morning and fabricate a lie. So I'm not one of those who say in every room where there is truth because I have experienced false accusation as a person. But let's pass, not false accusation we came to talk about today. We came to talk about church hurt. And so when there was nobody on my side, not the leaders, not the elders, not nobody, you know, I just a few of my friends that were like, ah, oh, don't worry. I had, I had, I had pain. You know, I had so much pain. My, my, oh, Holy Spirit. My reputation was dented. Here is me, young Holy Ghost filled teenager. I was still 19 around that time, 19 going to 20. Young Holy Ghost filled, loving God. I was that person that was always going to from conference to conference, meeting to meeting, looking for God. You know, I just loved God. I just, when I mount the altar to minister, the fire of God is everywhere. I just, then from nowhere, one devil entered somebody in my church. Do you understand? And from nowhere, my reputation is dented. People are beginning to doubt, even though they had no evidence. So in a minute, I hated everybody in church. I hated, I hated the girl that said the nonsense that she said. The man in question. In fact, <laughs> I remember my mom saying so. My mom was like, that, that, she does not, that she doesn't care about this thing that's saying no. That her own is, if it is this guy, that if it is true that is this guy, this kind of person, eh, that she's going to disown me, that if I want to do that kind of thing, that they are politicians, they are... <laughs> You know how they were saying in Igbo that it's a real where in Kimbara about that you have to eat the frog that is beat so that if they say frog eat that blah. so my mom was like this can't be the person that my daughter you know of course my mom believed me she was like the only person on my side at the time but I was hurt at everybody I was I was offended I was offended that nobody could see I want to tell you something many times when church hurt comes it comes because the devil is trying to distract you from what God is doing in your life at that time in that ministry your first reaction to church hurt is not to run away from church you know you don't just leave a church simply because people don't like you you leave a church because probably the holy spirit is prompting you up to the next place or you leave a church because you feel like your time is up here and you want to go on to other things but the fact that somebody doesn't like you is not the reason to just leave a place so i remember i stayed through that season and I prayed. I remember sometimes at night I'll just wake up and I'll just declare the Psalms over myself. And I'll be saying, Lord, you're the God of vengeance. You just clear my name. I love this church. I love this environment. I love what I do here. I love that we do music here and I'm singing here. I love my church and I don't want to leave. This was a painful situation. And I had to share my own story just in case there's somebody who's listening and you're going through the same situation of church hurt. People, some people have been hurt by their pastors. Some people, lots of things have happened. And the story we, we hear is, how can that happen in a church? My answer is, how can it not? The church is not full of perfect people. Do you understand? This is not excusing people's behavior. I'm saying that when you come, come with expectation that somebody might hurt you. Do you understand? Somebody, and you might also hurt someone. The church is not filled with perfect people. But if you are being taught in that church, if you, if you are experiencing the love of God in that church, if you are experiencing the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost, if you are being trained and schooled in that church, 
you might want to remain until God is asking you to leave. There are also people who are very sensitive. The moment they, the moment someone says something about them that they don't like, poof, I'm out of this church. That's why I don't want to come to church. It's like you're always looking for a reason to to attack the church. But if you go to the office, they insult you at work. They say all manner of things. You stay back. Why? Because you need a salary. What you don't understand is that the benefits of going to church outweighs, far outweighs the benefits of working in a particular company. So if you're not going to run away from work the moment somebody insults you, some of you, your bosses will tell you you're a stupid person. You are, you are dumb. But you still stay back. You understand? If you have not run away from your office, then you should stay until the Holy Spirit says, leave. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when it comes to church hurt, it happens. Almost everybody has had one or two episodes of that. But if God has not said leave, stay there and be the expression of love to them. The best thing you can do to people who don't, in quote, like you is to love them. Jesus said, by this shall men know you're my disciples. When you love one another, you don't attack hate with hate. You attack hate with love. If you cannot love those who hate you, you too, you have a problem. <laughs> So you see, it's not just them that have a problem. You see, you have a problem. Because if you're a true child of God, one of the signs that you're a child of God is that you love people who do not love you. Because if you love only those who love you, what's your reward? What's your reward? You only get a reward for loving those who despitefully use you. So if you find out that you're in a place where you're not very, very, you know, you're not very loved. Some people say the reason they leave a church is very, 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 very minute. You hear people say um, they, they gave they were singing and they did not give me the solo. They gave it to my friend and I left the church. It just doesn't make sense. It means you, you came with preconceived notions. If you come to church with an open heart, you'll be able to know that if people step on your toes, probably they didn't see your leg. You'll be able to give people excuses, give them the benefit of the doubt. Be the light in that church. Be the, be the shining star in that church. Be the light in that church. And for any reason you want to leave the church, live honorably. Don't insult anybody. For example, I gave you a story and I would never mention the name of the church where it happened. Why? Because there's still a grace in that church I love. I still go. I still attend. I just gave you an incident. I'm not going to carry the church name and put inside of it. If, do you understand? It's somebody, it's a set of people that did that to me, not the church. So when you want to leave a church, live honorably. Love people while you live. Don't be the reason why nobody wants to go there. Ah, that church, if you go there, they, da, 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 da. no, no, no. Don't be the bad mouth. Don't be the one that is hurting the body of Christ. Because if you hurt my body, I will come for you. If you hurt Jesus Christ's body, he will come for you. And you don't want to be, or you don't want to be attacked by the Lord himself. Because that's by the way. But for anyone who's going through church hurt right now, I'm just saying to you, the love of God, the guy is in your heart. And God will lead you. When it's time to leave, you will leave. But if God has said stay, you will stay. You will overcome and you will be the beacon of light and the beacon of hope in that church. Thank you for staying through. If this episode blessed you, if you were really blessed, if you received something from this episode, please comment. You know if you comment, nothing will happen. Leave a comment for me in the comment section. Love you guys till I see you next time.